uh, thank you for coming to our, our talk. Um, so today we're going to talk about um, everything ABI, basically, in, in Fedora, um, as far as um, ELF binaries are, are concerned. So for those of uh, you who don't um, know us, um, my name is Doji. Um, I work uh, for Red Hat and uh, I work in the tools team mostly on um, static analysis of, of binaries. So basically uh, applying compiler technology uh, tricks uh, to analyze binaries uh, to know whether what we're doing with our ABIs these days. Hi, I'm Simi and uh, I'm working in Red Hat um, in our alternative architecture team and uh, uh, when I get time I work on AVI stuff too. So um, in today's presentation we're going to talk about, well, or focus about mainly, I would say, um, five points. Uh, first of all, I'll try to, to explain what we mean by an application binary interface. This is kind of a fuzzy fuzzy area, and uh, then um, we talk about what we mean by um, ABI compatibility um, in general, and then we talk about the you know, tooling we have in Fedora today uh, to try and, and tame those uh, ABI compatibility ch uh, ABI changes. And if time permits, and I hope it will, uh, we'll look at some uh, real um, examples of ABI re you know, change reports that we have today in production in, in, in Fedora. And uh, well, we talk about future, right? As we usually do at the end of talks. So first of all, what do we mean by ABI? So during this talk, I'm going to talk about uh, usually about two binaries, right? Um, there's going to be one binary that uses another one. So the first binary, I'll name it E. That's the context. The second binary, so E will use code from L, which is the second binary. And so the first binary usually is either an executable. That's where the E comes from. But it can also be a shell library. And the second binary. Uh, is usually a shared library, but it can also be uh, a module that is dynamically loaded. So when I, whenever I say executable, it can be a shared library. When I say library, it can be a dynamic, uh, dynamically loaded module. Uh, confusing? Okay, we can go straight ahead. So once this context is set up, um, we need to understand that um, usually E, uh, the executable, um, at execution time requires some properties from the library, right? And uh, so I'm not going to talk about all the properties possible, right? I'm going to focus on a subset, and that subset is going to be what we call the ABI, right? So for instance, uh, one property that, is, uh, that E will expect from L will be some format. For instance, if we are on Linux, the format will be ELF. If we are on Mac OS uh, 10, God forbid, uh, it will be Mac-O, for instance. And on Windows, it will be PE, Portable Executable, etc., etc. And once, that, once we are in a format, um, the architecture counts. If you're running an executable, of course, uh, which is a, I don't know, Intel, uh, architecture based, then the library uh, needs to be Intel as well, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then there are more interesting stuff uh, required: um, the presence of certain symbols. Who here doesn't know what a symbol is? It's okay if we have time to explain. Okay, great. Um, maybe I should have asked. Who knows? Because people are ashamed. Yeah. To. So um, the presence of certain symbols, and those symbols can be either from functions or global variables, even files, you know, weird things uh, from, from, from the ELF binaries in our case, our case in Linux. Um, and even more interesting um, is 
the layout of the data that is expected from the code um, that starts at those symbols. If I say something that is not clear, please uh, stop me right away. So those uh, properties are all expected, you know, um, um, between the, the, the two binaries. And there are even more, right? There are things like, um, um, you know, function calling conventions, uh, how you pass parameters, you know, things like that. One thing that I am not talking about is the behavior is, uh, you know, whether, what the function actually is doing, for instance, that we're not, we don't care about, right? So we only care about properties that define the structure of, you know, of the entry points, of the, you know, what starts at the symbols address. So these are what I call structural properties, right? Not how the function behaves. Right. And so those properties constitute, I would say, a very loose contract, you know, between uh, the executable and the library. And that loose contract um, is what we call the ABI here. Uh, I'm staying general, but uh, with time, we'll see uh, more concrete examples of these things. So. We're talking specifically about the ABI of a binary, as opposed to talking, for instance, about the ABI of an OS, of an operating system. We're not talking about that. We're not talking about the ABI of the kernel, for instance, just you know, user space binaries in this case. So I'm nar narrowing the scope down. And, so, and in that context, this ABI is made of the set of symbols that are symbols of functions, and global variables that are defined in the binary and exported from that binary. We're also talking about the, the, the layout of the data that is used by those symbols, right? And things I did talk about uh, at the beginning, like the format of the binary, the architecture, and, um, and things like that. So these artifacts are the ABI, basically. So, usually people say that, oh, you changed the ABI, bad you. Well, actually, you know, we're doing free software and uh, we want free software uh, to, you know, to strive. For that to happen, uh, well, we need change. We need things to evolve. We need bugs, you know, to be fixed. We need new features to be added. Right, and well, we're not that rich. <laughs> so, um, well, we need to share uh, functionality. So um, unless we're doing, we're writing everything in Go, we're, <laughs> we're uh, going to have shared libraries around for some time to come, right? So yes, by doing this, well, we'll add new functions, we'll add new global variables, uh, functions will get new parameters, all those things will change. So ABI changes are going to be there for now and for the foreseeable future. So that change is inevitable, right? So what you, we need to, 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 to have, basically, is a way to say, okay, first, it's, it's, it's a way to see the change, the ABI change, right? As opposed to seeing changes in source code, for instance, right? And we need to be able to categorize that change. Say, this one is good, this one is bad, and this one, hmm, I need to think about it. I need to review it. So this is what I mean by uh, managing the ABI changes. So to be able to detect um, problems, um, well, we need to make, oh, can you read that? The, uh, the font is weird here. So we need to be able to spot the, the changes that make the ABI of, you know, for instance, of a library incompatible with applications that are linked to previous versions of that library. 
So we need to be able to see those changes and spot them when at least they are ABI incompatible. For instance, if there is a function that is removed, that is probably an ABI incompatible change because if there is an application that was relying on those functions, well, and you have a new version of that library without those functions, well, that application that is out there in you know, the wild will probably stop working reliably because it expects something that is not there anymore. That change needs to be spotted um, you know, in a, you know, in a meaningful way. Even more interesting, for instance, suppose you have in the library a function that is expecting some data that has a certain length, and then you have a new version of the library that changes that expectation, well, uh, um, sorry, a new version of that library that provides a data that is shorter. So the former code of the application expects um, a buffer, the data, uh, you know, that is wider than what is actually in the newer version of the library. What do we get in that case? Buffer overflow, you know, security issues that are hard to, um, to uh, debug and, you know, and fix. So that change in particular need to be spotted um, early on, etc., etc. And so I won't get too much into details when, about when this kind of changes happen, but you have examples here. Um, so all these small changes I'm talking about, we need to be able to spot them just by looking at the binary. Again, we're not looking at source code here. So interesting. But then once we've, we, we're capable of, of, of spotting the bad changes, then we can see the other changes too and say, okay, these ones are okay. They're okay, but I still want to see them, right? Uh, just in case, we'll see examples of where that can be interesting. And of course, um, um, we want to see those changes as soon as possible, right? Because of course, users will see them in the end. Um, but if we can see those, for instance, upstream, even before uh, we as a distributor handle you know, uh, the packages push, uh, before we push new packages, even better. So, to me, uh, one interesting uh, way of seeing, well, one in interesting uh, way of approaching this thing is to reuse existing concepts that we have uh, today. Today, we, we do this kind of review for source code, right? Uh, when there is a new, uh, usually it's upstream, uh, when there is a new patch, it is reviewed, usually, right? And what do we use for that? What's the cornerstone of this process? It's GNU diff. We review changes, we review diffs, right? And this is how we spot changes that are possibly harmful, etc., etc. So we thought that having the same com you know, concept of reviewing just changes would be interesting. Uh, and those changes, it will be interesting if those changes are narrow enough to only represent ABI changes. So that we could have the same process as we have for source code, but just for ABI. So, uh, it will be, uh, well, why, the, one of the reasons why we're not, uh, we were not capable of spotting ABI changes just by looking at source code is because of the signal to noise uh, ratio, right? A lot of source code changes don't impact ABI, right? Um, so, yeah, something tailored just for ABI, I think, is really needed. So, which brings us to the tooling that we have in Fedora today for doing that. Okay, so uh, so far we saw that uh, uh, how ABI impacts uh, different uh, how ABI impacts uh, different uh, other applications. So uh, we'll see how uh, we are going to deal this in Fedora because uh, all the packages are built in Fedora and uh, uh, 
a couple of packages depend on a on a package so if ABI changes in one package which uh, on which other packages rely then what happens that uh, if there is no changes in package but due to the change in the dependent package it is possible that uh, uh, the a the package rebuild will not work because the uh, the ABI has been changed and the the set of functions on which it was relying on it has been changed so uh, it needs to be uh, taken care in Fedora so that we can avoid doing such uh, uh, we can avoid such changes in Fedora and uh, we can have a, a better a better distribution without much ABI breakages and all. So what we are doing? Uh, so, uh, uh, we know that every um, new update is shipped by the Koji and there is new rebuild happens. So for each new rebuild, um, we will try to, uh, for each new rebuild, we will try to make uh, ABI checks uh, to the previous stable uh, release, uh, release of the package. Suppose, uh, for example, we are having Fedora 24 and uh, there is a new update for Foo package and uh, so there is a new update so it's now the new pack all the packages will use that new pack new set new full uh, version so uh, it needs to be tested against the ABI stability so that if any package rely on the full package then it uh, it doesn't break due to the change in the full package yeah so uh, so what it does, so it checks for the uh, ABI and then sends package, then what's, what should be done. If there is a changes, then send the report of the ABI changes to the maintainer uh, so that he knows that these are the changes and he should review the changes, whether it's a valid change or uh, not, and uh, maybe then do a new rebuild or maybe it's, uh, it's important ABI change, then maybe flag those changes. Uh, so, uh, we can categorize all the ABI changes into three parts, uh, which uh, some of, if there is no changes, we can mark them as past, and if uh, if there is a compatible, incompatible ABI changes, then we can say that it has been failed, so that package maintainer can look into it and uh, say that uh, it's, it's whether a valid change or not, and uh, maybe do a new rebuild, and uh, some area is gray area, which may impact uh, as ABI change, uh, it may impact the other packages or may not be. So these are like uh, needs to be manually reviewed and uh, we say as need inspection. So what tooling we are using in uh, Fedora for the ABI checking? Uh, we are using Tuskatron. Uh, any who all are aware of Tuskatron? Okay, so uh, if you don't know, Tuskatron is a framework which allows you to write automatic, uh, automated tasks. So like we have RPM lint, we have um, with in which you do the checks for spec files, and we have added one ABI check task, uh, which does ABI checking. Uh, so right now. We, right now we are doing ABI checks uh, for the subset of packages um, which are in the critical path and what it does is basically uh, ABI checks get triggered uh, when there is a new update uh, in Koji and uh, uh, and uh, it takes the latest stable package and the package uh, which has been recently uploaded and uh, uh, and uh, the ABI diff is compared and uh, if the uh, and the results is shown and uh, it tells the status whether passed, failed or in need inspection. So if uh, you, this ABI check task run is an automated task but uh, package maintainer can also run it offline by using the fed ABI PKG tip tool uh, which uh, can be run on the command line and uh, on the command line you can say uh, fed ABI PKG diff and uh, and the NVR of the package and it will pull from the Koji uh, the update and uh, it will do the ABI diff locally and uh, so before pushing it to the 
Fedora uh, Koji, uh, it's better to do the chain, chain checks uh, locally. And for the package maintainers, there are also tools like uh, uh, ABI package diff and uh, ABI diff, uh, which is independent of the Fedora. It can be run on Debian or it can be run on simple tar files and so on. So everyone should uh, do the ABI checking uh, so that uh, the, all the packages which depend on the uh, given set of package uh, doesn't break. And uh, this is, uh, the, the ABI check work is live and uh, it runs on Taskatron production instance. So uh, if you want, you can check it out. Uh, we have links for that. And right now we have two limitations. Uh, so it runs on C and C++ uh, uh, applications and uh, uh, we are currently running on grid path packages uh, which we are planning to further improve it to run on all the, all the packages. Uh, so, here is a live example. You have to type, type this one quick <laughs> so that we can. <laughs> so, here is a um, real example so which has been taken from the, uh, from the uh, Taskatron run on the package uh, called GPG. Uh, what do you call it? GPG me. So, you can, you can see that um, the log is for Federal 23 and. Uh, Next, uh, so the output is uh, split into different uh, pages so that uh, we can show all the reports are together. It runs for different architectures, so we cannot show it all together. So it's a, a small a subset of the results. Um, so you can see that these two uh, versions of packages has been compared, and uh, the changes which are shown, it's like. Uh, uh, it's for uh, each uh, each binary available in the package. So on each binary, the ABI comparison will be done, and if there is any change, that change will be shown. So we can see that uh, the there is a library called gpgme hyphen dot so available in uh, the gpgme uh, gpgme um, package. So there are some ABI changes. So we are showing it and uh, we see that there is no function removed so it's okay and uh, there is a change in the there is change in the existing functions or uh, whatever so we'll see later on and there are seven added functions and rest are fine so let's see what exactly these changes are in detail so we saw that there were seven added functions so uh, these are few functions you can see that uh, so this, this is the detailed uh, prototype kind of thing for the functions, uh, the cat star, the GPG me, uh, this is the function name, and this is the return type, and this is the symbol name, which you see in the library. This is in the source code. So this is kind of mapping, which is, is you can see that it's, uh, it's showing you in the detail what exactly the function prototype can be. And uh, this is the uh, versioning of the symbol, which is seen in the binary. So um, there was, we see that uh, there was one change in the function, uh, in the subtype. So let's see. OK. So the change in the function, uh, this uh, gpg me underscore cancel. And the function return type is gpg me underscore error, and this is the fun this is the parameter to the function. So th in the subtype change, we show that if there is any change in the behavior of uh, uh, the parameter either or uh, in the return type. So let's see where exactly the change is. And uh, this you can see that this function is defined at uh, line number one ninety four. Uh, in this file. So, okay, the change is in parameter 1. 
question. Maybe it's silly because I'm not really a C developer, but mm -hmm. you said that you are only looking at the binaries, yes. and now you know exactly on which line the yes. source code it was. Yes. You can deduce that from the binary. Exactly. We have debug info okay. which we has are, yeah. oh, we're from debug info. Exactly. Yeah. So we're trying to do the same kind of analysis that uh, debugger uh, debugger will do today, mm -hmm. but just for ADI uh, analysis thing. So this is the the point, right? To try to show the kind of details we can extract by just looking at the binary, okay. because it nice it, it, it needs to make sense to the okay to the programmer of course, but not only to the programmer to the guy doing the package maintenance, you know. Uh, so yeah, we need to talk about things that make sense, right? Types, function names, not symbols, addresses, you know, offsets. That's bullshit. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so the change in, so we can see that this function is a type, uh, the change is in parameter one, which is a type if. Um, so there is a change, so let's see what exactly this type if is. Okay, so this is a kind of pointer of uh, type gpg me underscore context, so we know that uh, it must be pointing to something, so let's see what exactly it is. So. It basically is uh, pointing to a structure, so, okay. So we know that the change is actually in this structure. And, uh, and the structure is defined at uh, this file 76 line number. So, uh, okay, next. So what exactly change happens? So you can see that type size has changed from 1664 to 1792 bits. So basically, um, the size of the structure which was earlier is not the same. It has been changed. So now see what exactly has been changed. Okay, so three data member insertion. Um, Small screens. <laughs> so the first change uh, is this new, new data type has been introduced at uh, opposite 416. So you can see that uh, the opposite, the size was 1664 and the uh, it was introduced at 416. So it's basically the insertion is in between somewhere in the structure. So if the change is in, in between, so it's most likely that the, this can change lead to the ABI breakage. Uh, oops. And similarly, this change is done at 1216 and 1280. So all three mem data members has been added in between the structures. So uh, it changed. So the, in the binary format, um, basically it reads from the addresses. So it will expect some other data member at that particular offset. But mm -hmm. now due to addition of these members um, in between, the, there will be some other data type at uh, offset, for example, 416. So it may lead to ABI changes uh, in the new, if you're using the new version of the library. Okay, so that's all. Now we'll talk about what needs to be done. So far, this is what we have. Uh, so changes needs to be at multiple level because uh, at Fedora we are using, and then the tools are in libabigil, like ABI PKGTF, and then we are running ABI check tasks. So improvements need everywhere. Uh, like uh, we need, uh, right now we are running on crit paths and there are some packages which needs a lot of memory like uh, 30 to 40 GB, uh, to, for example, in Firefox. So we don't have right now that much uh, memory for running the task. So this needs to be work out somehow, I don't know. As of now, maybe we'll talk to the infra folks and uh, We'll see. I'm sorry, but does it make sense to do such scans on Firefox? Uh, good question. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> sorry. No, no, uh, no, no, seriously. So, so the KD lips, that also needs uh, more memories. So no, no, we but can't I mean, he's right. <laughs> no, so, seriously. So, yeah, we say Firefox, but it's not just Firefox. It's Firefox dependencies, like, for instance, Gecko which is, uh, you know, uh, or, or, or libxdo.so, right? So these are 
Okay, Zul is not a good example. Okay, no, let's say. Okay. Let's say Zul, for instance. It can, it can be reused elsewhere, even though it's being phased out. Right? Like it has been used in the Thunderbird, and that due to that, uh, the exactly. issue is happening in Thunderbird. So, that, so it will be, you know, it's a library used by others, so it's, it will be nice to be able to analyze it. Um, so, but there are other, and there's WebKit, for instance, uh, in the same, you know, kind of area. So yeah, we, we need to be, I think it will be nice to be able to analyze everything. But yes, okay, I'll let you. Is that, does that answer your question? And uh, right now we show all the changes. And there may be chances that uh, developer don't want, and package maintainer do not want to flag all the changes as ABI changes. So uh, we may need the suppression specification, which is already available in, which already is supported by the libabigail tools. So if, uh, we can have something in place to keep the uh, keep the suppression specification maybe in the diskit and then maybe later on uh, Tuskatron can be able to uh, pull in those uh, uh, suppression specification and apply on the packages whenever it upda updates is happening and while running the ABI diffs uh, it will suppress if the changes happen in whatever mentioned in the suppression specification. So do not flag those changes. So it can avoid uh, uh, some changes which is uh, like kind of redundant to the changes happen in the ABI. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a French guy. We no. And. Uh, at ABI check uh, level, which is a task run on the Tuskatron, um, basically right now we are running on the task uh, available in the ECRIT packages uh, uh, list. Uh, so there are like, I don't know, I haven't counted the list, but it's uh, maybe 300 or 400 probably. But we are not running on all packages, so we would like to see what all blockers are there, or if there is not, then how we can start running on all the all the packages in Koji. And is it possible to request certain packages be added to that list? Uh, I. Yes, sir. I is I think uh, that uh, list is used uh, other places as well. So I can I can answer the question. Uh -huh. I think. We are already created by Pathos. I mean, you can't just set this tested by API check. Yeah, in Taskatron, we are currently have the list hard coded, I believe. So we basically have the critical path the list, and we subtract some packages that we know they are really, really difficult to test because, for example, they require too much, too much memory. Uh, I think we would be able to add some, like, white list, some more packages, but it wouldn't scale. So. Uh, we can do it so if there is a really strong reason, but uh, as well, well, we need a better solution in the future. I would say let's just, if you're interested, come talk to us. Um, and if we get too many requests, we're going to start saying no. But I suspect well, I, that there aren't going to be people stampeding at the gates to <laughs> get their packages checked. Well, there are two or three packages I know that pretty much at least once every door release breaks something downstream from it. Mm -hmm. Maybe I change it. Probably the option just didn't realize. Okay, let's, then let's yeah. talk after this and figure something out. And uh, support for uh, support for giving the devil packages. So it's a bit tricky. I will explain. So uh, right now, all the changes, the changes ABI you see is like uh, whatever uh, exported symbols are there in all the list of uh, shared libraries uh, available in a package. Uh, so. Uh, uh, but you cannot use all the symbols available in the library. So basically, whatever we ship in, uh, in the public headers through the suppose in Fedora RPM. So whatever headers are uh, shipped in the, through the packages, those are only supposed to be used. Uh, so uh, we need to uh, if we need to use the devil packages uh, or whatever wherever the header files are uh, shipped in the list of. Uh, Sub packages, uh, so, so only those uh, changes should be flagged, and rest of the rest of the uh, symbols or the functions should be considered as private because they are not 
exactly supposed to be used by the other people because uh, the headers are not available really to the uh, to the users. So yeah, we need for instance, the, in the previous exam example code example we saw, well, uh, that, that was shown there, uh, it, the, the file, the, the type here, the gpgme underscore context is defined in a file named context.h, right? If you go in the, look at the source code of that package, context.h is a private header. So actually this is not a problem because the change happened to a type that is private to the package. But it's, it's cool for, the, for folks to review it still. But it's not a problem because it's not happening to a type that is supposed to be used, right? So the, yeah, the idea is to, to know that it is supposed to be used, we need to go, well, we need to know that the type is defined in a header that is in slash USR or slash include something. Is that clear what I'm saying? So this is what we mean by taking into account the API of the package uh, when you are showing the API changes. If there is an API change on a type that is not meant to be used, that is a part of the API, we are not going to show it by default. But if you still want to see it, there is an option, dash dash show me all, all the world, and we'll see it. And uh, so the, this is the ABI package diff, uh, which is used as the, as the main tooling inside ABI check to do the, which shows the results. So there also needs to be improvement. So for example, the memory usage, right now we see, for example, in Firefox, uh, uh, it's like 30 to 40 GB of uh, memory is needed to run the ABI check successfully. So mm, That's we not are acceptable. We need to do something <laughs> at our level. It's hard to get that infrastructure of 40 GB of. Uh, and we're working on that. So. Yeah, so we are working on it. And uh, support for more C++ language constructs. Like uh, right now, you will not see the changes if there is a change in the union type. Then better categorization of ABI. Uh, for example, uh, the change there is a uh, new parameters added to the functions. We show it as uh, uh, in ABI changes, but maybe the parameter for one parameter has been removed. So it's basically if someone is using that uh, function, it will expect uh, three parameters, suppose, but there is now two parameter. So it's uh, definitely an ABI change. So maybe we we should flag it to something like. Uh, as incompatible ABI. Right now we show it as ABI changes, uh, which needs to be in need inspection or something like that. Then right now it, these are all command line tools, so maybe we like to have some good web, web based, uh, web friendly so that normal users can also look into it. And uh, the tracking facility for all the changes happening in the different packages in the web form. Uh, that's it. Any questions? Yeah, please go ahead. We have uh, we have fifteen minutes, ten minutes for mm -hmm. questions. Or thirteen. So thirteen. Thirteen. Cool. So we can have a buff now. So are you going to support suppression files? You didn't mention that uh, I think Oh the suppression the files. Yeah. Okay. So today uh, so what are suppression files, right? Yeah. Okay. So today, um, you see, uh, okay, the interesting API changes uh, are on types, basically, right? Saying a function has been added or removed, it's cool, but it's quite easy. The, the interesting thing is to see how the type changed and what the changes are, right? Um, but then sometimes in your project, depending on the project, a, 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 a change that is a problem to you, your project, wouldn't be a problem in your project. Let me give you an example. Suppose you are uh, doing a network kind of software, right, where your structures are being streamed out to the network. So if you add a new member to that structure at the end of the structure, to you it's a problem because, you know, uh, you're dumping the structure to the network. This is encapsulated in, you know, frames. So a new thing is bad because it changes the size of the frame, right? But to you, for instance, who is not doing that, 
a new member added at the end of the structure is not a problem because you know nothing was looking at the end of the, at that point before. So if you add a new data member there, it's not a problem, right? So maybe you would you wouldn't want to see those changes. There would be noise for you, and for you there won't be noise. So at our level, we cannot choose how to classify the change. Is it an incompatible change or is it just a change that needs to be So what we did is we provided a way for uh, users to specify uh, how uh, the tool could suppress some uh, change reports. So you can say, for instance, that if a structure, or let's say, let's say C++, if I'm in C++ and I have a namespace which name is hidden, any change in any type, which name is hidden, colon, colon, and anything else, should be shown to me because the namespace hidden is something that should be hidden. Is that clear what I'm saying? Or you can even say things like, oh, if I had a data at the end, a data member at the end of this structure named blah, 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 don't show it to me. So you can, it's a declarative file uh, that has an INI format where you can specify this kind of things. And then you can provide it to ADI div, ADI package div, uh, et cetera, et cetera, so that it applies the suppression to the changes. A bit like what happens, what exists with Valgrind. Valgrind has suppressions too. And they are called suppressions. That's why we call them suppressions, to do like Valgrind. So, but today, uh, when you're using the automatic way of doing things, what happens is, okay, the problem is how do you specify, how do you provide a suppression specification to your package? Because maybe the change is not meaningful for you. So what we did up until now is that if inside the package there is a file that ends up with the dot .abi binor, uh, you know, extension, it is considered as a suppression specification that is taken into account by the tool. But then that's not really cool, right? Uh, maybe people would like to have it in this gate so that it is versioned, you know, so that it can see the changes to their suppression specification. But then from within um, Taskotron tasks, it will be cool to be able to get those suppression specification from this gate, and if they're there, apply them to the API comparison. You know, things like that. So it needs to be discussed see how it's pr a process thing, I guess, you know, to see how we could do things uh, you know, in a cool way. And, yeah. it, does that answer your question? Yeah. Thanks. So, yeah, maybe something else? Uh, you mentioned about the concept of um, symbols versioning. Yes. Uh, can you tell me how common is this concept and how to find the documentation about it? Okay, uh, so two questions. Um, I'm just, uh, I, was okay, so I need to repeat uh, for the thing. So first, how common is uh, ELF symbol versioning? And the second question is how where can I find documentation about it? So I'll start with the second question. I'm doing my presentation. Thank you for asking. <laughs> Um, anyway, no, I'll start with the second uh, question. So there is a famous paper that I don't remember, which I don't remember the name of, <laughs> no, uh, written by Ulrich uh, Alpha, uh which uh, name is, you know, shared, shared libraries, you know, what developers should know about shared libraries. So if you type shared libraries, Ulrich Alpha in whatever search engine you're using, uh, you should find that. that. And it, it is well detailed. And it explains why it should be used as opposed to bumping so names. That's what we do usually. When. So Uli is, was, and I still is still against just bumping so names. And he was arguing for using ELF versioning instead. Right. So how common is it? It is pretty common on, uh, on core system libraries. Usually, for instance, in the GNU tool chain, so the GLMC and all the, the you know, core libraries of the GNU tool chain use symbol versioning. Uh, you know, GLMC, ELF utils, all the standard libraries of all the languages supported by the GNU tool chain. And we're seeing that more and more. Um, you know, more and more people are using it. 
So it is really important to be able to support it. Uh, and we do support it. So does that answer your question? Yes, thank you, Dan. You're welcome. Um, it, uh, how long does it take to analyze a newly built package? Seriously, it depends on the package. Yeah. But, but yeah. On, a, on, you know, on my machine, and I only, on my box, and I only run unoptimized version of the body belt because I want to see it really you know, the worst time, worst case time. Uh, ah, uh, for example, a few seconds. Uh, for example, here you can see that it took mm -hmm. only 2.18 seconds. Okay. So and, uh, but, uh, but this is not a good, okay, this is interesting. This is an interesting case because API packet key that we use is heavily multi-threaded. So if you have five shared libraries in your binary, in your package, sorry, and you want to compare it to another package, with five binaries. The five binaries are going to be compared in parallel if you have at least five cores. That's how it works. So usually on my machine, the time it takes is the time of the smallest, or well, the, the comparison that takes the most time. So it's two, three seconds. Usually when it's more than 10 seconds, I go look at it and I try to optimize things. Uh, but uh, for an optimized build, right? An optimized build. Does that answer your question? Yeah. And I have more. Yeah, sure, well, it's, on. it's the it's same price. Is uh, it's <laughs> GLIPC analyzed? Yes. Is that right? Yes. Okay, so uh, uh, can you can you find out if those are the changes somehow related to paths? To the file system. To, to paths. I mean, uh, something in the slash prods slash sys, something right. Can you find out if if function changed, if the body of the function changed, and the change is related to some location in the file system? Can ah, you find out? okay. So I don't. Well, we today we don't do analysis of instructions inside functions. So if what you're saying is that there are some instructions in a function that do change something, we don't do that analysis yet. Does that answer your question? Uh, yes. Yeah. So what we do today is just anal anal an analysis, statical analysis of you know, the types that are used, well, that are exposed by the function, that are used, that are reachable from the declaration of the function. Is that clear what I'm saying? Okay. And uh, if, if the library uh, exported the global function, uh, global, uh, global function is okay. global variable, yeah. you can detect that. Yes. Yeah. Will, yes. Yes. Uh, GDIC based libraries often have uh, introspection based bindings. Are you planning on uh, your, uh, comparing the generating introspections as well, because uh, they are often generated from the comments, so so they can change even though the the C library hasn't changed. So, uh, just to rephrase the question, so he says that glib based libraries often use introspection to generate, you know, functions. Uh, that, well, library stops that are used. Right? Um, and so can we detect changes in that case, uh, in the generated code? Yeah, uh, in the generated GIR. Even though, no, you know, the library, uh, the thing are, uh, has been generated from commands, right? That's why you say it. Yeah. Okay, so first, if the generated code is, uh, and, well, the generated code is compiled, and it ends up in an elf library, a binary, elf binary. Yeah. No, it's a it's a .gir file. It's, it's like a, it's, it's not an elf binary. So, so I, I was just wondering if you are planning on on on, uh, on adding a .gir file comparison uh, in the future. Oh, uh, you want? Oh, no, 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 no. wants to know if you can test the uh, the, the packages that were built on against you that you can test them to see whether or not the .gir files they are generating. Break somebody else down the line. 
Okay. So, so, so run, the, run the tool as part of the API check and check to see if the result has, has changed. That's interesting. Today, of course, we're not doing that. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but that's, uh, I like the question. Uh, no, that I don't like the other question. <laughs> Sorry? One minute. Yeah, one minute. Okay, so he says we have 10 minutes. So, uh, <laughs> no, sorry. Uh, no, so, uh, today, so, of course, we read type information and, and many information from ELF, right? But we don't only do that. So, when we have the ABI representation, you know, in memory, we have uh, our internal representation, we can also dump it into XML. An XML format. I call that the .API format. And then you dump it to XML. And then you can take that XML and say ABI div, command line. First parameter is the XML. And the second parameter can be a binary. So you're comparing the ABI of a binary against a, an ABI that is specified in XML. So what I'm trying to tell you is that we have a reader to read ABI information, well, ABI from type and functions and variables information from XML. So it is very well conceivable and possible and not totally complicated to write a third uh, reader that will read type functions, global variables, you know, this kind of artifacts from something else. If that something else is, you know, type, you know, type info coming from, you know, GR, GIR things, I think that is uh, very well possible. So, yeah, we've, we've, we've had this, uh, this problem sometimes that, that um, uh, so, so, so the way this is used is that, is that for example, there's a Python module that, uh, that uh, knows how to read those files and like do runtime introspection. And, and then, so, so, so it's possible to use C libraries from Python, for example. And, uh, and, uh, and sometimes they, the bindings just change without anybody noticing that. So, yeah. So yeah, it's very well possible to yeah to write a reader for something else. And we have it was last week, I think, someone yeah. coming yeah. and saying, Oh, could you support Apple binary format? I was like, Yes, write a reader, whatever. So yeah, we can do something like that. So we still have five minutes for folks. <laughs> yes. Um, you were talking about future improvements at the end of your talk. I'm wondering, um, you know, one trend I see is continuous integration is becoming more and more common, which is great. <laughs> and I wish this was also part of the development process. Like, once at the moment someone is writing a patch, let them know, oh, are you you're changing ABI? Do you intend to? And say, Okay, if, if they wish to, they would proceed, but if they weren't aware this would affect the API, they could rewrite their change to be compatible. Sure, uh, yes, and uh, and uh, my answer is we're already doing that in GCC. Actually, I'm a GCC developer. Uh, so in GCC, there, uh, we are depending on some, some, on some libraries that are developed elsewhere. For instance, in GCC, we uh, support address sanitizer. I don't know if you heard about that thing. So it's developed in uh, LLVM's premises. So uh, address sanitizer depends on a library, link sanitizer, that is developed in you know, um, LLVM's uh, uh, SVN repository. So from time to time, there is a sync, you know, like involved. We take the code from the SVN in LLVM and boom, we put it in the GCC's uh, repo. And now, to, before doing that, we maintainers are asking that we run API div, you know, on 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 what, and to compare the previous version we had in GCC against, you know, the new thing that we are importing, and we review the changes. And if there are like API changes that are not compatible, then we shout or we try to do something. So yes, this thing is happening. The Gilipsy guys are planning, well, they actually are doing it on their, you know, by hand today, but there are plans to try to automate that somehow. Uh, their uh, upstream project picking that up, but yeah, coming up slowly, but yeah, that's a direction uh, that people are thinking about. So I guess we are done now, 10 minutes, oh, sorry.
So, uh, okay. So, in theory, uh, it's just work, right? Uh, so, I don't have the, the, the thing is I haven't worked on that yet. But the kernel is an elf thing. So, sincerely, yes. Uh, if you know, I'm interested in having that, either doing it myself or helping someone else do it, or just accepting patches, whatever. And I think it's coming. Um, but you know, the kernel is special. Um, but yeah, it's something we're interested in. You're not the first one to talk about it. There, there's some chatter uh, around, and uh, so yeah, th this is definitely something we need to, you know, we need to add, and it will be interesting. You know, basically, for the kernel stuff, we need a K ABI div tool, a new ABI div tool, which I guess we use a libabigail library thing, but we need to sit down and define what you know what we want and you know and just come up with a tool uh, for that and you know. so I think we would call it a day as far as this presentation is concerned. Thank you very much for